Hello everybody. In this video I would like to demonstrate uh, probably the most powerful and my favorite uh, image segmentation tool of Microscope Image Browser. Uh, the, it, it's called uh, Graph Cut Segmentation and it is available under Tools Watershed Graph Cut Segmentation menu. Okay. So first let's start, uh, we open a data set. This is uh, again some crop of Trypanosoma brucei imaged with uh, serial block face ACM. Uh, we can see a few cells here and uh, the idea that I want to segment some organelles out of these cells using the graph cut segmentation. Uh, so to start the tool we need to go again to the menu, tools, watershed graph cut segmentation. The tool appears here. There are three different modes built in within this tool. The watershed is basically will give the similar results but it's a little bit slower and less interactive. The graph cut is the tool which I'm going to describe today, and another one is object separation. So we have some objects, we can break them into the individual. If we have some kind of material, we can break it into the individual objects. So uh, let's talk about the graph cut. Uh, there are several panels here. The first panel is the mode, so we can use it, uh, we can segment things in the, for the current slice, which we see on the screen. We can run the algorithm for all slices in 2D mode, so slice by slice. Or we can benefit from 3D mode where we uh, uh, work in the volume. And uh, that's probably the most useful for 3D electron microscopy uh, data sets, uh, as the, similar to the one that I have now on the screen. The second panel allows us to select some kind of sub-area. So if imagine if you have quite large data set, it will take a while to proceed with it. So one of the options is actually you can really limit the uh, the imaged, uh, the processed area to some sp specific smaller uh, subset. And you can limit in the X, Y, and Z dimension. And the actual, another way to speed up the process, you can actually pre-bin the data set. So when you will start segmentation, for example, I can, if I, use these parameters what would happen that the Im the data set would be resampled so x y dimension will be decreased twice and this will stay as it is or of course you can uh, resample them both twice so now we'll leave it as one one so i can reset it uh, these boxes can be populated for example if i zoom into certain area i can press the current view and then x y numbers will be updated to uh, kind of highlight only the area which i see on the screen and another option, for example, I can select something with the brush and then press uh, from the selection button and in this case the, the area of these values will be populated from this area that I, I just highlighted. The next is the image segmentation settings. So here we can specify the color channels that we want to use for the segmentation. Now we have only one color channels and also two materials which are now uh, empty because we haven't placed any seeds. When we fill this, uh, we can go and calculate uh, super pixels. So the algorithm works the way that we work not with the individual pixels, we work with the clusters of pixels. And there are two algorithms that allow us to calculate clusters. The first algorithm is called Sleek, and it works best for the images that have distinct colors, like for example, these cells over background, or this lipid droplet over background, or maybe this condensed chromatin over the other uh, contents of the nucleus. And another one is watershed, which works best for these kind of situations where we have this kind of membranes. So actually to demonstrate this, I can s I first I select the slick algorithm. I'll zoom in here and uh, define the size of the super pixels. Okay, we can keep 500. Uh, I'll work now in 2D mode and press uh, the super pixels graph button. Uh, what happens then after I press this button the algorithm calculates clusters the pixels and calculates connections between them and I can press the preview super pixels button to see them so now we can see that it's somewhere there because we limited our sub area to this to this part I can actually reset it and recalculate the pixels okay so now you can see them um, they are they follow basically the cells pretty nicely they also follow chromatin. There is a bit of uh, not really great part here, which from one side can be improved if we, for example, increase the contrast a bit, just make it darker. Let's see. 
the AOC it's much better now it describes the things or another option is just to make this uh, super pixel smaller so if it decrease their size twice then most likely they will describe the situation much much better uh, okay so now um, okay I'll uh, just briefly show the other one it's the watershed and in the watershed uh, okay just if I press again calculate and then preview so it happens it uh, basically it breaks the uh, super pixels these clusters based on this kind of whether we have this kind of reach and if we have electron microscopy image then we need to have this type of signal black on white if we have light microscopy image then we need to have white on black mode okay then uh, the size of this pixels is defined by this uh, edit box so for example if I put like three then I'll get a lot a lot of small uh, super pixels and it takes a bit longer to calculate those if I put for example uh, like 30 then my super pixel is going to be much bigger and it doesn't really kind of in many situations doesn't really degrade the quality uh, the results so let's start first with the sleek mode so uh, since as I mentioned it's best works for this kind of darker over brighter things so for example I can segment the sleeping droplets they can be basically segmented with for example black and white thresholding uh, and the, over this masked area but now we want to see it a little bit like in the, uh, uh, using this tool because it's, it's it's much more universal than just black and white thresholding okay so to start this I press plus to create first material which I called background and I select something which is not this kind of flipping droplets and press A to add this so now this is the first, this is background uh, since I don't really want to calculate all this clustering for the whole image I can limit my view to uh, limit the data set to my current view which has the flipping droplets and then I put one seed basically well uh, inside the flipping droplets they, they're touching so I think it should kind of feel uh, they should all be segmented Okay, I press plus, say this is my lipping droplet, and press A to add it. Okay, now this is still red, so I have to press the update lists button and uh, make sure that my background is background and the object that I want to segment is LD. And now I press segment, and then you can see, okay, these guys are segmented, but we're still in this 2D mode. So what I want to do, I want to turn into 3D mode. Uh, I want to specify the size of the super pixels. Well, let's make it like a thousand. Uh, sorry, not pixel, but super voxel now because we're in 3D. And I press this calculate. And now I can preview them. So we can see that the actual area from for which uh, these uh, pixels were calculated is inside this area, which is between these numbers. And because of that, we're not really calculating for the whole image, but only for the one which we want to segment at the, mo at the moment. Okay, I just I make, sure, make sure that my super voxels describe well the structure, that they do. And then I just press the segment button. And uh, now what I can see that my super, uh, my lipid droplets are pretty nicely segmented. There are a bit of leak here, maybe I can fix it. But now I just want to show the general idea. So assuming that they are good, so what I can do, I can just press Shift A to uh, assign them to material of my model. Okay, let's actually make this display back to the original contrast. Okay. Um, now, uh, next step, for example, I want to segment uh, nuclei for all these cells that I have here on the screen. So to do that, I'll turn on back to the, uh, to the watershed mode. I will make maybe this is as 15. I can use this uh, 2D mode uh, to analyze, uh, to estimate how big the actual pixels. I think they're quite good enough. So I can use this parameter in the 3D mode and uh, now calculate the super pixels. So this is the slowest process of the whole uh, routine. And if the data set is quite big, it may take a while, so you can start it and go for lunch or leave it overnight, things like that. Uh, it's also sometimes useful to click this autosave button. 
uh, what happens is that after the numbers will be calculated, uh, the script will automatically save them. So the next time, if you open the tool, you can just load this uh, the actual uh, the actual uh, super pixels or voxels. So now I press this uh, button, super pixels graph, to calculate all these things. It asks us, me where I want to save this the graph. So I press save, and now I just need to wait. All right, now we're back, and uh, it took 145 seconds to calculate the all this uh, structure. Uh, there are like 16,000 uh, clusters. We can preview them. So now we can also see that they describe pretty nicely this nuclei. So and also in this folder we created this uh, the, the structure uh, with this pro graph, so we can actually load it if needed. Uh, okay, so let's see. So these are our super voxels. So now, so now what we do again? So we want to segment, as I mentioned, nuclei. So for that we again select a background. Uh, something like this and then I press shift R to replace the existing background that I had for these uh, lipid droplets with the new one now press plus to add uh, another material which I call nuclei and now I just need to put like seeds inside this uh, few nuclei that I have here in this image how many I have maybe this one as well and then I press Shift A to add the nuclei's, and now we just uh, okay. We need now we need to update these lists because now it does know that we actually have nuclear uh, material. So I press Update List button and select the nuclei in the object field and press Segment. So now it was segmented, and now we can see. So this is one nuclei, two. Like you can see that all three nuclei were segmented in. Uh, 100 millisecond, 160 milliseconds. Um, so they look quite good. There's no problem with that. And then I can press Shift A to add them to my to my model. Okay. So now my model has the sleeping droplets. I may have them all, uh, and the nuclei. What else? Uh, for example, we have this nice uh, mitochondria that are quite quite long. Segmenting those manually would be really a nightmare. Well, maybe not nightmare, but it will take a while. So we want to segment them, and in order to do that, uh, what I do, I just press uh, click inside. Okay, maybe first again, I'll do the same. I'll just as earlier, I will select this some kind of areas, which I will uh, assign to the background. And now I just click inside one of these mitochondria. They all tend to be connected so one might be enough and then after I press plus let's say this is my mito and then press A to add now it's in this kind of bluish color uh, yeah it's a bit hard to see Maybe I'll make it brighter So then I'll get back to this uh, graph cut segmentation tool, press update lists, uh, select mitochondria here, and then press segment. So now, uh, well, it was segmented to some extent, not really completely. There are still some gaps, which is uh, fine for now. Um, so the, the reason basically for that, that sometimes the leak of the signal is actually blocked. In this case, one of the options you can add additional seed, for example, here, and then restart the segmentation. And now it actually would work a bit better. Another option is uh, to modify this parameter, which is the uh, this co like coefficient. And this coefficient is actually uh, describes how further this uh, signal would leak from your seed. If, for example, I put like something like a five, and then recalculate then actually this the signal won't really run away too far it will be around this uh, my seat so I, I i want to keep keep this number a bit higher let's put 35 and then segment now you can see that actually it's uh, the segmentation is much better the signal leaked 
quite far and actually the whole mitochondria is segmented in like in no time yeah, except like this area uh, this could be due to for example I might need a little bit smaller uh, size of the super pixels uh, the problem if this number is going to be too high like for example I can put like 150 in this case the the seed leaks too much it, it actually can can highlight some something which is not even connected to the seed like for example like in this case so uh, the, this number should be quite large but uh, not uh, so large that it actually leak away uh, from the seed so for example I will probably keep it like as 35 um, and then now I just need to add few more seeds to the other mitochondria um, that I want for example to segment just kind of well this is different cell but probably it's also fine and I basically can also segment these vesicles as well now I press segment and um, now these mitochondria are segmented um, I probably have a little bit uh, problem like in this area because of, of these things possibly I might able to fix this if I add the small seed here okay yeah it's it's a little bit flat region so I would definitely need uh, I see it, they're not really separated so I need much smaller parameter here to segment that area um, but in general, uh, the all mitochondria can be fairly easy segmented using this tool, this method. And uh, for example, now I can select them and copy to my model. And after that, I can go and visualize them. Uh, enter model, MATLAB, the surfaces. These are nuclei. This, uh, oh, so there were lipid droplets, nuclei, and then this mitochondria. So this is like the model which I made in like 10 minutes or something. But of course, uh, oops, sorry, a little bit more uh, attention would be required for this uh, for this mitochondria because of it, uh, it they become very very flat, and I need to use a little bit smaller parameter here. Um, all right, so uh, this is a universal tool. It works for EM, for light microscopy. There is no any kind of further limitations with it, and it's quite efficient. And I highly recommend to use it. If there are any problems, like for example in here, there was some kind of a leak. From one side, it, it we might uh, fix it uh, by adding additional seed here, or we can of course just use the brush tool and just use the manual mode to kind of uh, fix a little bit some small uh, problems that might appear. Uh, on certain slices. Uh, anyway, this is quite minor, minor fixes. Okay, thank you for your attention.